no one can close. And what he closes, no one can open. Verse 8, I know the things you do and have opened a door for you that no one can close. You have little strength, yet you obeyed my word and did not deny me. Y'all missed it. Write this letter to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. This is the message from the one who is holy and true. The one who has the key of David. What he opens, no one can close. And what he closes, no one can open. I know all the things you do and have opened a door for you that no one can close. You have little strength, yet you obeyed my word and did not deny me. I'm starting a brand new series today. I don't know how long I'm going to be in this, but I'm starting a brand new series today entitled Divine Opportunities. Divine Opportunities. If you're taking notes, write it down. The picture is right there behind me. Divine Opportunities. I want to talk from the subtopic. Hope you're ready for this. The door is open. The door is open. I thought I was going to get a better response than that. Maybe you don't need no doors open for you. <laughs> but I need some big doors open for me. Yeah. 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 I don't have time to waste time. I need some big doors open for me before this year is out. Amen. Amen. Now, maybe I'm not talking to you. Maybe this is the wrong house. But uh, I'm going to get mine. I'm going through it. I'm going through it. I'm going, it's open? I'm going through it. I don't have to pray because it's open. I don't have to knock. It's all right. I don't have to ask anybody. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Because it's already open. I don't even have to wonder if it's for me. Wow. I need you to bump somebody and say it's open. It's open. God bless this word. Help me. Communicate this <laughs> in Jesus' name. You don't even have to pick the lock. You don't. I was thinking, I was thinking, you don't have to pick the lock. Because it ain't even going on. You don't need confirmation. Come on. I'm, listen. Yeah. 
The door is open. This is not some random series. This is not just some sermonic subtopic designed to create excitement that will eventually die out and lead to disappointment. This sermon series is a prophetic declaration designed to communicate to you what God opened up for you now. God told me to tell this church and those that are watching, the door is open. All right? Let me make it, per let me make it personal. Your door is open. Strategic 
about finding uh, some 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 help. Yeah, yeah, I don't need you, Father. Because y'all not gonna be able to do that in other pictures. Come on. Yeah. I see, I see, I see the name of y'all business. Excuse me, the name of y'all corporation ah. on the side of y'all truck. Ah. Oh, my. Oh, my. Because y'all have an umbrella corporation, which means y'all have multiple businesses. Yeah. 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 Yes. Don't, 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 don't get drunk off of the excitement of the launch. Yeah. Yeah. Embrace it, celebrate it, but be thinking about expanding now. Yes. Y'all don't, y'all not gonna have to wait to expand. Y'all gonna have to expand. The problem y'all gonna face is what business to launch next. Yes. I speak new, new, new businesses. New help. Y'all gonna hire somebody and and and, and they gonna treat y'all stuff like it's theirs. It's going to be an older person. It ain't going to be no young person. It's going to be an older person. So get, get all y'all stuff in order. The W, whatever, whatever you got to get, get it all in order. Because y'all going to be employing people. Amen. New opportunities. New seats. In rooms. I don't care that they gave you your, your annual recently. I don't care about that. God don't care about no your your annual situation. Why you can't have multiple annuals? No, no. God make the rules. New seats. You better hear me. New seats. And new rooms. I'm shaking up here. New offices. Mm, wow. This is why you can't afford to hang out and focus on what you missed. You can't build an altar around who told you no. How long were you going to ask God why they told you no? That wasn't your door. If it was your door, you would have went through it. Yeah. And I'm telling you, God got something bigger for you. Because yeah. yeah. last I checked, the bigger the door, the bigger the opportunity. Yeah. And some of y'all get ready to walk through double doors. Yeah. Go to Isaiah 43. Go to Isaiah 43. Okay, you missed it. Okay, move on. Mm. Yeah. They told you no. Why are they trying to figure out why? why? Why are you trying to work your connections to find out why they told you oh no? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're spending more time investigating why they told you no than positioning yourself to see what God is doing now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What is this? Yeah. And you're hearing a word like this, you don't even think that God can bring you to something big. Because you were so focused on the door you wanted to go through. Yeah. Wow. That's it. That's it. I speak big doors over it. She didn't even realize what she was speaking over Rita. I speak big doors over y'all. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah 43, verse 18. Forget the former things. That's it. Talk to God about it no more. God walked up to Josh and said, how long are you going to mourn for Moses? God walked up to the prophet Samuel. How long are you going to mourn for Saul, who I rejected? Some stuff.
stuff you prayed for that you wanted, God rejected. Because he didn't want that for you. Bumps the Bible said he got something better for you. Tell him he got something better. Prophesy to him. He got something. They need to hear this. He got something better for you. Forget the former things and do not dwell. Dwell. It means to sit in. You're sitting in it. You're praying about it. Not for clarity. You're trying to ask God why it happened. You're sitting in it. Oh my God. You're in worship, raising your hands because we love how we know we love to look the part, but we're sitting in it. So it's taming our praise. We can't even agree with the message. It's taming our tongue. We're dwelling on it. We're sitting in it. And you're wasting time sitting in something God never had for you. I only want the doors that have my name on it. Yes. 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 Don't dwell on the past. Yeah. Look at the next word in verse 19. It's the three letter word. Yeah. That's powerful. Let me spell it for you. <laughs> C. <laughs> yeah. Which means Stop looking at what happened. Stop looking at what you thought you missed out on. And see the door that is already open now. Lord, I pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, remove scales off of all of our eyes. Scales of disappointment. Scales of frustration. Scales of anger. Scales of selfish ambition. Remove all the scales from our eyes so we can see what's open to us. He said, see, I'm doing a new thing. Somebody shout new doors. New doors. Now it springs up. Let me contemporize the text. Now it's opening up. Are oh, you ready to walk through it, though? We 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 um we have some things planned and some, some things scheduled and I'm like wait a minute I need I need a I need a weekend bag mm -hmm. I don't want to bring this thing on a on a on an airplane because you know people go through your luggage you know mm -hmm. so I'm preparing for where we're getting ready to go mm -hmm. so I got a weekend bag I'm ready already mm -hmm. Come on. <laughs> and we haven't even made the arrangements yet. Are you ready before it's time to get ready? Oh, my oh my God. God. <laughs> How long are you going to skip and talk about it? Skip and wish about it. Skip and tell other people about it. La, 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 la. God is going to do it. God is going to favor me. God is going to do it. God is going to How long are you going to skip? And the devil is like, yep. They wasted more time. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm. They're out of position. Oh yep. Ooh, ooh. The door is right there and they can't even see it. Oh mm -hmm. He says, see, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? What I'm telling you, you got to receive this prophetically. Yeah. Because if you receive it prophetically, you're going to walk in something tomorrow. Yeah. He says, I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Which means what God is going to do is going to be unusual. It's going to be out of the ordinary. Okay, door in the Greek 
leaders, check this out. Door in the Greek language means access to blessings, places, people, and uncommon opportunities. Your blessings go look different. The places you get ready to go go be different. And the people that will meet you there go be assigned to you. Because there are uncommon opportunities that God is orchestrating right now. See, you don't even know what you're going to walk in by 5 o'clock today. Yeah. 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 Will, if you don't believe it, you're not going to walk in it. Yeah. Write this down. I'm about to give you a sticky statement. The place where you experienced restriction, limitation, and obstruction it's the same place you will see doors open. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's why, that's why God didn't move y'all yet. God moved, but he said, no. I'm not moving you right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open up a door right where you are. God changed them. Nope. I'm not gonna change them. I'm gonna open up a door right in their face. And I'm gonna usher you right through the door so they can see it. I'm telling you, you've been asking God to move you out of certain places, move you out of certain environments, and God is like, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna open up the door right there. The place where you experience restriction, limitation, and obstruction is the same place you get ready to see your doors open. Y'all oh, yeah. don't hear this. Because here's what happened, Jared. What was once open to you, closed to you. God says, I didn't close it, though. I'm about to open it back up. You don't even know how many people have been working hard. They are tired trying to keep you out that door. They got reinforcements to stand and block entrance to the door. I'm going to show you in a minute what John the Revelator wrote in Revelations that applies to you right now. Just because they restricted you don't mean you are restricted. Just because they limited you don't mean you are limited. Just because they are obstructing the door does not mean you can't go through it. He opened it up for you. He opened it up for you. Ooh, he, some, some, boy, uh, somebody made your Jesus mad. Oh my God. Somebody, somebody made your Jesus mad. He's like, oh, you want to try to get in their way? Come on. You got to deal with me. Yeah. You, you're trying to limit them? You got to deal with me. You're trying to bully them out of what's rightfully theirs? Yeah. You got to deal with me. Yeah. Yeah. Can I push this? Can I push this? Oh, oh my God. Open doors mm. are hinged, movable barriers. Mm that give access to places and rooms. Mm -hmm. Open doors serve as an entry point yeah. from your current place to a new place. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Doesn't even matter if the new place is the familiar place. Right. Because if it's a new place, there are new blessings attached to it. Right. That's why you should never get familiar with what God is doing and how he is doing it. Because it's always new when it comes to him. That's right. That's right. So watch this. Without open doors, we would stay confined to a particular place. Not growing, not thriving, and not moving. Yeah. We'll just live a stagnant life, which is anti-progression. Romans 1.17, for in it the righteousness of God 
is revealed from one door of faith to another door of faith. From one interest point to another interest point. As it is written, the just, that's y'all, shall live by feelings. The just shall live by faith. The progression in the text, Sister Marita, is God moving you from one door oh Lord, to the another to, to the next door. This is your progression season. Doors enhance movement. Yes. Yeah. That's why some of you are stuck. You don't know the door that's open to you. You've gotten so stagnant and, and so focused and so stuck on the little space you're occupying. But there is more through the door. And you got to embrace this progression that's in the text. You are never supposed to stay stagnant. You are never supposed to stay stuck. Yes, enjoy the blessing. Yes, praise God for it. But you should never build a monument when he's moving. Yes, that's the Bible. If I open that door, I'm going to move through it. I know I'm in the house, Javi. Some of you are waiting for the door to open because you haven't moved in a long time. Here's what's scary. Wife, boo, <laughs> Mrs. Bro. Sometimes when you're close to the door, or when you're in the vicinity, you can hear it open. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so even if you don't see it, because doors make noise. Unless you're real skillful like me, I don't like to hear whistling and cracks when I hate to hear a squeaky door. So I get a whole bunch of Vaseline and just put it where it turns, by the hinge. Because I cannot stand to, it just does, it's like, it's like nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> but as skilled as I am in eliminating the noise, I can still hear when the door opens. Yeah. 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 See, see, see uh, God, God, God is trying to show you I'm, I'm opening some things uh, up uh, around me. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And even though you're so focused on other things and you can't see it, I have, I have touched your hearing. I have, I have created in you an inner ear yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that affords you the opportunity to hear my movement. Because open doors enhance this movement. I'm telling you, I've been announced, listen to this. I'm, I'm telling doors are opening Right now. Yes. You won't. There are 90 days, according to the minister, left in this year. You won't. Whoever this is for, if this resonates with you, Find somebody to high five and go back to your seat. Mm -hmm. You won't be kept out mm -hmm. in this season. I gotta go, Hoppy. I gotta go.
I have a lunch date with my queen and my princesses. <laughs> you won't be locked out Amen. in this season. Amen. I know what they're keeping from you. I know the things they are creating is making this season frustrating for you. You won't be locked out in this season. You won't be blocked. Somebody's resume getting ready to make it to the top high. Somebody's application. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Get ready to make it to yes. the top high. Yes. Somebody's bid. Come on. Yes. For the property. Come on. Get ready to make on, it bid. to the top pile of that broker. Yes. You won't be blocked Amen. this season. You heard the door? You heard the door? And y'all weren't even looking at it. But y'all heard it. All right. I gotta go. Um, God told John the Revelator to write a letter to you because God knew that you would hit a season that would require some divine intervention. God knew that you would need some doors open for you before January 1. I don't know. <laughs> Honey, what are we getting ready to walk in? But I, I, just hope, I just hope we can handle it. I believe, I believe, I believe this season of, of us being on the back side of a mountain has expanded our capacity. Yeah. I'm talking to y'all too. See, it's a reason you have not been preferred. You have not been selected. It is because God has been expanding your capacity. Because when he's getting ready to pour in your life, he wants you to show people how to manage it in humility. Because what's going to hit your life has caused other people to get arrogant and prideful, yeah. Yeah. which is why they fail. Yeah. You ain't gonna fall. Yeah. 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 So God knew that we, all of us, would need some doors open before the year is out. Yeah. It's right there in our text. Listen to what's written in this letter to you. Revelation chapter 3. See, the Bible has to become personal. If it's not personal, it's not transformational. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7. Write this letter. So he's telling John to write the letter to the church in Philadelphia. This is the message from the one who is holy and true. The one who has the key. Somebody say of David. Of David. What he opens, no one can close. And what he closes, no one can open. The expression, the key of David, is taken from Isaiah 22 and 22. Let's go there real quick. Let's, let, 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 let's work our Bible. Let's fill out our Bible right now, if y'all don't mind. Just indulge me for a minute, and let's just work the text. Is that okay? Amen. Isaiah 22, 22. I will give him the key. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. John is quoting the prophet. Yes. This, is, this is prophetic. Yes. Whenever I read or preach from a prophetic book or a prophetic text, this is God trying to get you something. Yeah. I'm not going to always say, thus saith the Lord. But I'll take the text and present, thus saith the Lord. 
John the Revelator is quoting the prophet. I will give him the key to the house of David. The highest position in the royal court. When he opens doors, no one will be able to close them. I don't care who got there first. That's my door. Get out the way. That's my door. You trespassing. Now if you don't move, angels gonna move you. Oh my God. I really don't want angels to move you, cause you might come up with a limp. Get out the way. Look at somebody say they better get out of my way. They better get out of my way. Tell them, say, I don't want my angels to get them. When he opens doors, no one will be able to close them. When he closes doors, no one will be able to open them. He's talking about Jesus. John is writing about Jesus. They both are agreeing. That Jesus has unlimited control and unlimited authority to give whoever he chooses access to what he opens. Don't get mad. Because I'm here. And I'm not going to tell you how I got here. Because quite frankly, I don't know. I heard my door open. And I started moving towards the door I heard. Deep calls Unto the deep. Yeah, yeah. God will always call you to what he has prepared for you. Yes, yes, yes. So don't get mad at me. Yeah. Because I'm walking to my door. Yeah. I don't have an answer for you. And I'm not going to apologize. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that my door don't include you. Because for the past six months, you've been trying to distract me from it anyway. You, ain't been, you have not been praying for me. You've been putting questions in my head to make me question whether or not that's my door. Jesus has unlimited control and unlimited authority to give whoever he chooses access. To what he opens. Because he has the key. Yeah. Can I have seven minutes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he has the key. Mm -hmm. Which makes Jesus the doorkeeper. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Jesus has the key. Mm -hmm. Which means the key that he has belongs to my open door. Which makes him the doorkeeper. A doorkeeper's main responsibility is to guard the entrance of the door and prevent anyone from entering into that door without permission. You got permission for what's opening in your life. Doorkeepers are the ones that's in charge of opening and closing the door, right? Mm -hmm. The doorkeeper guards the door to restrict people from going through the door that's not supposed to be going through the door. Mm -hmm. But they are also the ones that signal to who the door was open for. 
I'm telling you, you're going to be hearing the same thing until this year is out or until you walk through the door. Yeah. That's your door. Amen. That's your door. Amen. That's your door. Amen. Jesus is going to send somebody a text message. Oh my God. That's your door. Amen. Stop asking me. That's your door. Amen. Stop fasting. That's your door. Amen. Stop looking for confirmation on the Facebook. That's your That's door. Yeah. You're going to hear it until you walk through it. This is why I told, I told you earlier, you can't hang out on what you missed. Yeah, I'm sorry. yeah you blew it. Dust yourself off, repent, mm -hmm. and vow that you won't blow it again. Mm -hmm. yeah, you make, yeah, yes, you made the decision. Yeah. And caused some stuff to close. Yep, you did it. Mm -hmm. Dust yourself off, repent, get back in position. See, we think, we think God judges us for things when it's really us. We judge ourselves and say it's God. But the Bible says that when you confess, he cast it into the sea of. So why you bring up something that he forgot? Okay, I'm boring y'all. Let me get out of this. Verse 8. I know the things you do. Traditional. I know your works. Mm -hmm. And I have opened a door for you that no one, listen to me, what's going to open? I don't care who's in the vicinity, Sister Marita. I don't care who have keys. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. They're not the doorkeeper. Yeah. You know, because sometimes people can make you think they have authority. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. yeah, they'll they'll they'll, oh, yeah. they'll they'll dangle their little funky authority in your face, uh -huh. <laughs> and you gotta remind them you didn't open that for me. Oh, yeah. 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 Wow. Your little raggedy keys don't even fit. You got them Fisher Price keys. I got Kingdom keys. Yeah. Four, four, four things. It's not, it's not, it's not on the screen. Four things. Four things. Jesus, Jesus has been aware of regarding you. Four things. Jesus acknowledges about you. It's right there in the text. He says, "I know the things you do." The first thing. The first thing Jesus is making you aware of that he is acknowledging. He acknowledges. He's acknowledging your works. Amen. That means he has been paying attention to everything you've been doing since January 1 of this year. Wow. Thank he, you. Has, he has paid attention. Lord, well, you better let me minister. He's been paying attention to everything you missed out on and how it made you feel mm -hmm. and everything that was close to you and how it made you feel. And every person that told you no, he, he's been paying attention to all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I'm going to free somebody. He says, he says, I know you've been trying hard. I know you've been trying. I see it. I'm telling you, God sees what you've been doing. Number two, the second thing he acknowledges, he acknowledges the little strength you have left. You have a little strength left. He's acknowledging the little you have left because when you are trying your best and you don't see the fruit of it, it can drain you. Amen. When you're trying to do everything you know to do, and you don't see the harvest from it, it can drain you. Yeah. When you've been doing everything you know to do and encouraging everybody and helping everybody, and nobody's encouraging you and nobody's helping you and you're still doing it, it can, it can take your strength. He says, I see what you started with. And I see what you have right now. Amen. I see that, that you were once full and on fire and giving your all to everybody. And now you have just a little bit left. I see it. I see it. I see all the, he, I, I saw all the resources you started out with in January. And now you have a fraction of it left. And you can barely provide and take care.
care of yourself. I see it. My God. And he says, I see it. He says, I saw what depleted you. I saw what almost took you out, but that little strength you had left enabled you to stand strong. was coming to you for answers. And now you have answers. And nobody's nowhere to be found. He says, I see your strength. The second, the, the third thing Jesus acknowledges, he says, he says, you have kept my word. In the midst of all of that, you didn't charge me falsely. In the midst of all of that, you still remain faithful. Do I have some faithful people in the room? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the midst of wanting to give up, yes. you still maintain your faithfulness. Yes, thank you, Lord. In the midst of being disappointed because everybody else is getting blessed and you're like, Lord, where's mine? You are still faithful. Yes. And the fourth thing Jesus acknowledges, he says, you didn't deny him. Amen. This is you. Oh, you are right here in verse 8. He see the things that you've been doing. He see the strength you have left. He saw your faithfulness in obeying him. And you didn't deny him. Because disappointment that hits your life day after day can cause a person to just say, you know what, God? I don't want it. I'm done. Job's wife <coughs> told Job, all the stuff you are, in, you are going through, you still maintaining your faith? Why don't you just curse God and die? Now, wait a minute. Before we judge her, we don't know what she experienced. Because some of us, we get a flat tire, we want to give up on life. Yeah. They lost the family, they lost the business, they lost their house, they lost everything. And she's looking at her husband with boils on his skin, and he is still maintaining his faithfulness. Yeah. She's like, really? Just curse God and die. Never judge people for how they handle pressure. Because you don't know what might come out of your mouth when pressure hits your life. Wow. We give Joe's wife a bad rap, but we know none of us have ever walked right there. Yeah. Yeah. So we let's not be too hasty in judging. She shouldn't have said that. Okay. Let you lose everything in one day. Yeah. You're going to curse God, the stars, your frog, the dog, everybody. <laughs> you curse the TV when your team loses. <laughs> and you don't know none of them. You curse people when they cut you off. Wow. <laughs> Anger management, people. <laughs> Give me some more music. <laughs> I have, I have five, I have five points I want to give you about your door. You, your, your door does five things for you. They want to write these down and take a picture. Number one, the first thing your door does, it provides you with security. You, you won't have to worry about people taking something from you once you walk through it. Because once you walk through it, God will close it. Because he don't want anybody in that new place with you that's not supposed to be with you. I, I need some people, single people, you ought to start asking, who sent you? <laughs> Come on. What you do? What, 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 what you doing here? Oh, Wait, what, where you come from, Charlie? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know you like that. Where you? Mm, it's about you. Who sent you? Who, who, who sent you here? Uh -huh. That's right. 
The text says, Master, where did the where did the weeds come from? Well, the enemy saw them when y'all were asleep. Don't drop your discernment because you're in your in your blessed place now. Your door will provide you with security. Number two, your door will give you privacy. Some stuff, people don't need to know. <laughs> they don't need to know. If God's not promoting that in your life, you don't. That's good. I am a private, private person. And uh, there's just some people don't need to know. I didn't know you moved. You was not going to know. Who's your address? We're not doing that. How you doing? What part of town you live in? Houston. Yeah, but what part? How you doing? Some of the moves we're making, we're not making no noise about it. Because when you are in a new door, when you go through a new door, and God closes it, he creates privacy. Because he doesn't want you to be a victim of antagonistic people who are jealous. Because everybody that say they're with you not really with you. And the last thing you want to have to deal with is them hating on you because you told God yes to a door he opened. God does not want you sitting in a dark room crying about why they treat you like that. So he says, I'm going to protect you from you by closing this door and maintaining some privacy in you. Number three, the door will serve as a focal point for this season. A focal point. Some of you are going to have big doors open that's going to be promotional. That's your focal point. Some of you, your doors are going to be business related. Some of you, your doors are going to be doors of new relationships with people that are influential. Wow. That's the focal point. Yeah. Now what I love about what I love about a house is, um, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know. But no house just have one door. <laughs> <laughs> there are multiple doors. But if you don't walk through the first one, So your focal point in this season for somebody may be going back to school. An uncommon opportunity, a divine opportunity, free. Wow. That's rare, yes. that's uncommon. Yes. Yes. So once you walk through that door and you graduate with honors, Amen. debt free, Amen. Yes. then God will open up another door for you to meet somebody yes. that make decisions in high places. So once you walk through that door, then the Lord may, then the Lord may open up another door. Okay, now it's time for you to get the big house. Because yeah. you were able to steward school in those relationships accordingly. Yeah. Reason people cannot get some tangible blessings is because they don't know how to steward relationships right. Yeah. And God says, if you can't steward a relationship right, why would I give you a bit mm -hmm. For you to walk Walk past people and drive past people with your with your nose up in the sky. Wow. Number four, the door will maintain separation. I hate to be the one to tell you this, but doors separate you from some people. Yeah. 
but God will separate you from some people because He don't want drama in your life. Is He? Somebody should, 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 should you know, stay. No, you know, stop saying no more drama. Mary had it right. No more drama. No more drama. She had it right. No more drama. Let the door maintain separation. And this is the one I like. The fifth one. Your door will reduce, reduce the noise. When our doors are closed, some stuff we don't hear. Watch this, because we won't need to hear it. Amen. It don't pertain to me. Amen. Did y'all hear that the dog got out and, built, and bit the boy? I'm sorry it happened, but no. We didn't hear it. We was in the game room watching Mario Brothers. <laughs> it reduced the noise. It keeps you from being distracted. This is what's opening to you. I might be able to close doors next week, but this is what's open to you now. You gotta walk through it. Even if you gotta walk through it by yourself. Because I'm telling you, you don't need who you think you need. All company is not good company. Some company is distracting company. And you cannot be distracted in this season. Stand on your feet, we're getting ready to pray. Take it easy. <laughs> for those of you who, who, who uh, no, thank you, Lord. For those of you that's getting ready to purchase a house, Every house that's available available for to tour has what's called a lockbox on it. And only certain people have access to the code to open the door. Right. Yeah. Right. As skilled as you might be, Pink Panther, you can't pick the lock. <laughs> you need the code to get the key. Jesus has the code. Jesus has the key. You gotta go to him. Y'all need something open for you. You gotta go to him. I'm telling you, your efforts are not gonna get it done. He has the key of David. He opens and closes and closes and opens. You can't do it. Who you know can't do it. Pastor Mo and Pastor Andy can't do it for you. I'm going to bring you right to Jesus because he's the one that has the code and the key. I don't know what you need open right now in your life, but if you heard God, today. If you heard this word today, I promise you, if you receive this, it's going to be open within these 90 days. But you got to be serious about this. You got to be obsessed with this. I'm going to pray a quick prayer, a short prayer for you. I'm going to pray the same prayer that Isaiah declared in the text. I need you to see it. Because if you don't see it, you're going to miss it. It's already open. And God is so merciful and so kind. He does not punish us for what we close. Because sometimes disobedience can close some doors. Spiritual temper tantrums, God, like you ain't ready. Now listen, let me say this because we, th th there's this spirit that's, that has infiltrated the church. We like to change God's mind for him. 
especially especially when things don't go the way we thought they that's what I have to say God told me to do this when he really didn't and then we say he says to do, to do something else when he really didn't we gotta be focused and we gotta be faithful if he said it hold on to it regardless of what's going on in your life the word will get you out of whatever it is but don't change God, God's mind for you. Don't, don't do that. Don't say God said something and he, and he didn't say it. Obey. Even when it's uncomfortable. Obey even when it's hard. God would rather you obey him crying than to disobey him and do something else. I've got to close. Father, I thank you. I thank you for this, this word. I thank you for today. I ask and pray, God, that you help us all to see, even those that's watching online, help them see that their door is open. Give, it, give them the strength they need to move past the past move past frustration, move past the disappointment of yesterday so they can walk through those doors you opened for them. In Jesus' name, amen. There may be somebody that's watching online or somebody that's in the sacred room, the sacred space. If you've never confessed Jesus, he said, I am the door. He identified, I'm the door. Everything you need is through me. If you've never confessed him, if you've never acknowledged him as Lord, this is a great opportunity to do so. I'm telling you, I'm so glad I walked through the door.